we'll just introduce ourselves and then we'll let you all take it away. Okay. Hi, I'm Jamie Walensky. I'm the manager for the Exercise Experience and Resident Life and Services. I'm Jamie, I work in the Great Black Office. Here, also working with the office. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Jen Stanis, I work over in ESS. So good morning, we're Rafika Omega, and here we're talking about um, our scholarship pillar. And the benchmark we're trying to achieve today is excellence. So I'm Stephanie, I'm the former president for Rafika Omega. And I'm Linda Ralston. I was our VP of Intellectual Development last year, and our current VP of Intellectual Development is sick today, or she would have been here, but yeah. gotta so, deal with this cold weather. <laughs> Um, and so why we think we meet the excellence benchmark, so um, we were looking at uh, the different benchmarks before compiling this presentation and thought that we really fit the excellence one. And so two points that um, we think why. First, we integrate scholarship in a chapter operation, so um, I think we're finding very creative and innovative ways to make sure that um, we're inducing our sisters and enticing our sisters to promote scholarship uh, within themselves. So for example, and Linda will talk about this more, um, during Greek week, which is a really hectic week of practices or attending um, different events, um, we ask captains to block out. We have like block out times where sisters are encouraged to instead study and not worry about Greek week practices or the event itself. And um, instead like either unwind or relax too, because those are also really important um, when we're talking about like self-care. And then the next part is um, how scholarship changes, shapes our experiences, Alpha Chi. And so I think one cool thing about our chapter is that we don't have a scholarship chair. Instead, we have a vice president of intellectual development. So I think this is more encompassing um, just beyond what we're expected of as students here because uh, intellectual development can mean like cultural events. It can mean um, like learning more about the world around us, uh, learning more about things beyond our majors. So I think that um, this has kind of helped us shape our um, scholarship plan um, in Africa and Omega. And I'm gonna hand it off to Linda to talk more about last year. All right, so last year in January when I came into my position, we all sat down with our exec board and as staff as president, and she asked each member of exec to come up with a mission statement for their goals and kind of their vision for the semester. So the mission that I came up with is kind of the three points you see here on the screen. So the big theme was support of our sisters, as our kind of, our open motto is together let us seek the heights. So it's all about working together as a chapter to help us become the best versions of ourselves. And looking at the intellectual, intellectual aspect of being college students, that was kind of where I wanted to look. So the first point is to be supporting each other's academic interests and our intellectual development. So with this, I kind of looked at how can I provide opportunities for sisters to work together, to be um, like next to each other, working towards their individual goals and then providing those opportunities for sisters to support each other. This was through group studying, this was through mentoring programs, this was through kind of providing opportunities for sisters to talk and get together and kind of seeking the heights in a group. And then rewarding sisters who are doing well. This kind of ties into the optional voluntary program that we had, which was a reward-based system. There was no requirement that we placed on people who were already doing what they needed to to succeed. So I focused on just rewarding people who wanted to go above and beyond, who wanted to be recognized. But if you're kind of quiet and you go by yourself and you study, you, you do your thing, you're doing well, you don't need any interference from me. So I focused on rewarding people who wanted that positive feedback. So kind of to align with my mission, I had three main themes, which were the development for academics, professional and cultural development, Figuring, figuring obviously academics, your GPA, doing well in school, but beyond that, we're in college to become professionals, whether it's going to medical school, going to grad school, or getting a job right out of college, we're all gonna become professionals one day. So it's very important that we're thinking about that now and how we can prepare ourselves to get there. And then cultural development, especially in a place like Cleveland, at a school like Case, where we have such awesome cultural opportunities, a variety in the student body, we have great opportunities to learn about the world around us, and it's important that we take time to do that. So, then coming right into this section, we are going through kind of the requirements of the Pinnacup Scholarship Pillar. So each of our slides coming up are going to be one of those items. So academic achievement, we had to make kind of a smaller font on this page so we could fit everything that we wanted to talk about. 
So under academic achievement, one of our um, things that we like to do is having a peer mentoring program where each new member class who comes into our chapter gets assigned a mentor. That's going to be an older member of the chapter who's in a similar field of study and who can then advise them on what classes to take, if they can lend textbooks, if they can advise on which professor to go with or strategies for success like sit in the back because like it's they're really loud or something or sit up front because their handwriting is really small. Whatever kind of advice they can give from that first hand experience. We also have a positive point system that I kind of mentioned earlier. It's not a requirement. Last year, my first semester, we had about 60% um, involvement. And then in the fall, when I was kind of pushing a little bit harder, reminding people to be involved, it went up to 70%. So I was encouraging Maya that hopefully this year we can get it up to 80% without making it required, just encouraging people to do that out of their own, like, their own drive. Um, the positive point system involved weekly recognition for people doing things like going to see professors, going to SI sessions, visiting a museum, kind of covering professional, cultural, academic, all of those, those three themes that we have. And this year, Maya has already implemented a Geek of the Week award, so in every chapter, she will recognize somebody who's submitted points for that week, and then they'll get a small prize, just to kind of remind everybody that our sisters are doing awesome things for their intellectual development and to remind them, hey, you probably did something in the last week. Go submit your points in case you've forgotten. One thing that we did new last semester and we're going to be continuing is GPA goal setting. So it's just a simple survey at the beginning of the semester saying what do you hope your GPA will be this semester? Just so you're thinking ahead that your actions from the very beginning of the semester are building up to that end GPA that you're going to get for the semester and then when you graduate, the cumulative of your four years here. This year, this semester, we also incorporated beyond just a number, but what did you do last semester that worked well? What do you plan to do this semester? Outside of just academics, what other goals do you have? To kind of think, you know, the broader scheme of things, not just about the number, it's about you as an individual. We also have a new academically focused listserv called Alpha School Omega, in case that need you. So that's just an opportunity for sisters to say, hey, I'm going to be at KSL for the next three hours. Come join me, knowing that we're here to support each other, we want to learn together, and kind of remind yourself that you're not alone in studying, because we all need to be there. And then you don't have to plan for it, you can just kind of spontaneously say, hey, I was planning on studying, why not join up? And we can keep each other on task and have a quick BuzzFeed break, but then get back to work. Um, we also had a scholarship reception. We've done this every semester, but last semester was our first time inviting professors. So kind of getting to extend our reach into the community, breaking kind of down the barriers that are kind of awkward between the student-faculty relationships. So kind of getting to break the ice, get to know each other, and recognize our sisters who are doing well, giving out awards, and having a speaker come to kind of do some thought-provoking activities and make us think outside the box. Um, as Steph mentioned, we also had some structured study hours during Greek week, and I think we also had that during DBA week, when we have our busy, our busy domestic violence awareness week. We have a lot of activities during that week, so it's important to take time. Don't forget about your academics for one week, because that can come back and bite you for weeks to come, depending on how that goes. So the next item is intellectual development. On here we put just a couple of things that we do. Over winter break, spring break, and summer break, we had book clubs where sisters were invited to read the listed books, one for each break, and then we had a discussion afterwards. So we read Lean In, Outliers, and Orange is the New Black. These were books that were given out in a survey and we were picked by our sisters what we wanted to read. So I read Lean In and Outliers and I got to participate in those book discussions. And it was really cool to get together with your sisters and talk about something besides school, besides Greek life, besides case, kind of think about the world outside. And with Lean In, we were able to talk about like our futures, what it means to be a woman in the professional world. And with Outliers, what it means to be talented and what it takes to be successful, and kind of some of the anomalies in the world and how it all fits together. And then Orange is the New Black sparked discussion about the prison system and drug, drugs and crime and like what it means to be a woman in sisterhood. 
So that was a really cool opportunity that I, I read part of the book and then I went to the discussion. So it was, really, it was a really eye-opening experience and it was cool to share that with my sisters. And then McDowell Month is something that comes from our nationals at Alpha Chi Omega where we were founded as a musical fraternity for women. So we still, we don't have that requirement any longer, but we still have an appreciation of the fine arts. So February is the month where we celebrate our appreciation of the fine arts, doing events such as going to the museums, going to Playhouse Square, and even doing like crafting and different kind of fine arts activities. So we're currently doing that right now. We went to the Cleveland Museum of Art the other day and had kind of a seek and find where sisters had teams and went and found different pieces of art and they had a good time. So we like to encourage cultural growth in that way. And then for the rest of the year we have a cultural chair who does programming of kind of a similar, similar caliber to get us out into the community learning about different things about the world around us. Alright, so um, I'm going to be speaking about the theme of um, academic community involvement and engagement. And so, um, as Linda mentioned too, for our scholar scholarship reception, this was the first time in a long time that we invited professors to attend. Um, and we thought that this would be really important for sisters to engage with professors outside of the classroom and develop relationships in those ways. Um, instead of, and like kind of shying away from just like, you know, asking to regrade homework or look at a test again. And so um, what we did at this reception in particular was have sort of like an activity in the beginning where we did trivia so that it kind of break the ice more and just to be able to learn about the professor um, more on an individual level. And um, as we were going, or as we were doing the scholarship reception itself, I uh, was able to talk to a professor, um, Professor Kahnemacher, and he was um, really excited to be there. And so that like uh, showed me that professors are really engaged with their students outside of the classroom as well. And he was just mentioning about how he sees so many familiar faces and that he didn't realize that they were all part of our chapter. So again, um, that was like really positive and so we're gonna keep trying to continue to um, welcome and, and invite professors to these events. Um, just, to, just because it is really important for us to um, get to engage our professors outside of the classroom environment. Um, and then um, again, this, in this particular year, we were able to find an academic advisor. And so in the past, it was if someone fell below our um, GPA requirement standard, they would be meeting with just our vice president of intellectual development to come up with a plan. And we found that a little ineffective just because it's a peer telling you how to, how to do your work and how to study better, and they might not know about the resources, or like, it, it, just, it was a lot harder to um, be able to come up with an effective plan. Um, and so we were able to find Megan Miller, who's the student advisor at Weatherhead, and she's on board um, just starting this semester and helping us um, help sisters that are falling below the GPA requirement. And so um, as we go towards our um, areas of improvement and um, growth, we're gonna talk about more of how we're gonna incorporate her into our chapter and um, chapter operations. And then um, lastly, again, because um, Linda's and Mai's position is the Vice President of Intellectual Development, um, we really promote Faculty Friday. Again, just uh, meeting professors that are outside of our majors, because oftentimes we're siloed into just what we need to graduate with. So we really try to promote Faculty Friday within our chapter and encourage sisters to go to them and to learn more about like just subject matters that are either um, of interest to them or just out beyond like just what they know um, on a regular basis. Um, and then in the theme of professional integrity, so a lot of things that Linda really talked about, but uh, professional integrity as we saw it was just, I don't know, holding ourselves responsible for our grades and making sure that um, we keep ourselves accountable, but also um, to our sisters as well. And so in our bylaws, we have a membership standard for our GPA requirement. And last year, we raised it from a 265 to a 275. And that is uh, well above the national um, GPA requirement from Alpha Chi Omega and um, here at Case in the Greek Life GPA. And we thought that this was really important because we wanted our sisters to strive to be better and do better in school. Um, and I know that like here we're really uh, consumed by how well we do academically, but we felt that um, just raising the bar and be, being able to say that we're well-rounded was really important to us. And then um, again, Linda mentioned about the individual goal setting. So this is really creating more accountability and making sure that um, you, like having, having to create this like GPA requirement for yourself like takes a lot of time to think about, like, cause you have to map out and see the possible grades you can get in each class and then calculate it yourself. And so I think that this makes people think more, like there's more forethought in the GPA grade that, or the GPA goal that they wanted for that semester instead of just saying, I'm gonna achieve a 4.0 and not realizing that this one class would be really hard to get an A in. And so um, 
coming up with that was really important. And then again, we averaged everyone's uh, GPA goals and created a chapter goal. And so um, throughout the semester, Linda would remind everyone that our chapter goal last semester was a 3-6. Um, and it was, <laughs> it, was, it was a really high goal to reach. And so it was just a constant reminder of like, this is our chapter GPA goal. And this number just didn't come up from, you know, like uh, uh, Google or like she did not just make this number up. It was an average of everyone's goal um, for the semester. And so um, seeing that number up there and knowing that if your GPA, your individual goal changes, then it changes our overall number that you see up top. And so I thought that was a really good way of incorporating accountability indirectly. Um, and just showing sisters that we're part of a bigger whole and that, you know, collectively as a chapter, um, we make up this 3-6 GPA goal. And then um, also about uh, requirements to hold positions. So um, being on exec, you have to have a 3-0 cumulative. Um, again, this is a really higher standard just because we want to make sure that individuals that are taking on these leader leadership roles are um, like doing well in school already. And we ask them to keep up um, a 275 requirement every semester if they fall below that then um, they're given the option to like either continue and come up with like a very stringent plan um, and take more ownership of that grade and the leadership role as well or they have the option to also step down and focus more uh, more on their academics because again when you step into a leadership role you never realize the amount of time it takes up and then um, with our non-exec we're actually um, increasing our GPA requirement for that as well, because we've realized that in the past we haven't, and so it's also important for anyone taking more of a role to be um, more sound in school. So in our bylaw revisions coming up, we're increasing that to a 285 um, as a minimum to hold, and then um, if you fall below a 285 each semester, then as long as you have a 3-0 cumulative, we think that's a, a pretty good benchmark to say that you're gonna be all right in the future. And so I'm gonna talk about um, career development and um, this bigger overarching theme about what Linda was saying in professional development. And so um, uh, Linda was able to bring in the Career Center right before the career fair to talk about um, like elevator speeches, um, and, uh, elevator speeches and how to talk to employers and recruiters at the career fair. And um, again, we were able to have sisters um, sort of write down um, different experiences that they have or that they can talk about to just look uh, more appealing to recruiters and um, bring someone in and again like just getting sisters to think about um, what they can do to like give themselves an edge at the career fair was really important and we also talked about the importance of networking and how to like build a relationship and how to maintain it because oftentimes we are uh, quick to build one but we don't necessarily follow up or continue that into the future and so um, the presenter from the career center really gave us um, more tips and ideas of how to even um, like keep track of people that you build relationships with. She said like in your phone or a note card, like write, you know, where you met them, like what you talked about, you know, different little things like that so that when you email them or communicate in the future, you have something to fall back onto. So that was really helpful. And then um, 